still rejoice and be glad in it. All of my life, I've never known you to fail. You remain the same, and wonderful is your name. Let's sing together. All of my life, all of my life, I never knew you to fail. You remain the same, and wonderful is your name. All of my life, I never knew you to fail. You remain the same, and wonderful is your name. All of my life. From the top, all of my life, I've never known you to fail. All of my life, I've never known you to fail. You remain the same, man. You remain the same. Wonderful is your name. Wonderful is your name. All of my life, all of my life, I've never known you to fail. You remain the same, man. Wonderful is your name. You woke me up this morning. You woke me up this morning. Started me on. Put food on my table. Brought joy to my day. I'm glad your love has never changed. Your love has never changed. And wonderful. And wonderful. And wonderful. Wonderful is your name. You woke me up. You woke me up this morning. Started me on my way. Brought joy to my day. I'm glad your love has never changed. And wonderful, and wonderful, and wonderful, wonderful is your name. For the rest of my life.
psalmist says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name, for the Lord is good. And because he is good, we praise his name on this morning as we worship him. Our hymn for this day is hymn 223, the solid rock, the glory and praise of God. We sing together hymn 223, the solid rock.
season of suffering and sadness and this time of dysfunction and chaos and confusion. Pray that the word of the song might become true for our lives, that in everything we might be grateful and give thanks to you, for it is the will of God through Christ Jesus our Savior and Lord. Now allow the moment that I stand to uh, strengthen us, speak to us, and cause for our minds to be focused on you. May faith develop in us that will help us find firm footing for sinking and troubling times. Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope, and my will be lost in thine. In Christ's name we pray, the people of God together say, Amen. It is my joy to again greet you in the name of Jesus our Savior and declare on this fourth Sunday in the month of April how good it is to be alive and blessed by Almighty God. He is a good God and he is worthy to be praised. We're thankful for you who share worship with us via live stream and pray that our time of worship might give you strength and hope to continue walking by faith and not by sight. I invite your attention this day to the Gospel according to Luke chapter 24 and I want to begin my reading at verse number 13. The gospel according to Luke in the 24th chapter, beginning at verse 13, it says, Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened uh, in prior days. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, What are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them named Cleopas asked him, are you the only visitor in Jerusalem and do not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things, he asked, about Jesus of Nazareth? They replied, he was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. Verse 21 says, but we had hope that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. I want to preach today about when what you hope for doesn't happen. When what you hoped for doesn't happen. For the third consecutive week through preaching, we are studying from pastor scripture that provides for each of us a post-resurrection account of Jesus our Savior and our Lord. We see him today, according to scripture, moving, living, and giving direction to those who were his disciples then, and even his disciples today, even you and me. In the previous two weeks, the Gospel of Mark has been the focus and basis of our study, but today, me, I invite you to join me in a post-resurrection account recorded for us by Luke the Physician. If you remember, and I hope that you will, on Resurrection Sunday, uh, while preaching from the subject, Hope from Empty Places, I offered you and myself a definition of hope that I've come to appreciate and call as my own. Hope, as defined by Dr. Michael P. Williams, is the expectation of something good. On Resurrection Sunday, Patsy, we learn and we discover that even in empty places like a cemetery, there is hope. Hope can spring up. Hope can spring forth, and we also learn that hope can be ours even when you and I find ourselves in empty places in life. There is hope for us. There's hope for us after brokenness and broken relationships. There's hope for us after heartache and heartbreak. There's hope for us after disappointment and divorce. There's hope for us after dealing with death and sickness. There's hope for us after suffering and bad news. You and I and all who believe and still have hope, no matter what our situation and struggle in life might be at any particular moment. Now, as much as that is true, Constance, and it is, today I want us, really God wants us to wrestle with another truth. And that truth is, sometimes what we hope for in life doesn't happen. And, and, and because, because, things that we hope for in life sometimes don't happen. What do you and I do when what we hope for doesn't happen? Well, what do we do? How do we respond when what we hope for does not happen to us? This is a question posed in my sermon title for this day. And, and, and really, really, it's a something that you and I and everybody who lives must wrestle with at some point in our lives, in all of our lives, at some point, perhaps even now, we will wrestle with the reality of hoping for things that do not come 
into being. Now, I'm not talking about hoping for a certain gift for Christmas or your birthday. No, I'm talking about uh, hoping for real significant and substantive things. I'm talking about hoping that a parent would be a parent, but they don't. Hoping that a loved one is healed, but they die. Hoping that a broke relationship heals, but it doesn't. Hoping that a, that a doctor report will be good, but it's bad. Hoping that a child will get their life together, but they don't. Hoping that there will be enough money to make ends meet, but there's not. I'm talking about hope for things in life that we need that sometimes don't come just like we need them. What, what do you do? How do you and I respond? What happens when what we hope for does not happen the way we hope for it. Well, that's what we see when we read our text for today in Luke chapter 24. Jason, in verse 13 of Luke 24, Luke records two followers of Jesus en route to a village called Emmaus, seven miles from Jerusalem. As they were walking en route to Emmaus, like people commonly do, they began to talk with one another about the things that had happened in their life recently. The happening that they were discussing had to do with the dashed hopes and the shattered dreams that these two followers and others, I'm sure, were feeling because of what they felt Jesus did not do. D -d Don't miss that, that they were walking away from Jerusalem on their way to Emmaus because their hopes had been dashed, their dreams had been shattered. They were upset, maybe even angry, because what they hoped that Christ would do, he did not do. These two men who have been followers of Christ are now, according to today's text, they are upset, they are frustrated, they're disappointed, and perhaps they're even angry because what they hoped for had not happened the way they thought it would. Can you imagine their conversation? Can you imagine them talking about how we thought Jesus was the one and he ain't the one? We thought that he was going to help us take over and now look at us. We ain't got nothing. Can you imagine how hopeless their conversation was that day while they were walking to a maze and talking amongst themselves in a hopeless way? Luke lets us know in verse 15 that Christ showed up and walked among them, but they didn't recognize him. Jesus showed up and started walking with them step by step, and they did not know who he was. When he shows up, according to verse 17, Jesus asked them, what are you discussing? In verse 18, Cleopas speaks up and says, are you the only visitor to Jerusalem and doesn't know the things that have happened there in these days? To which Jesus responds in verse 19, what things? Cleopas says this, he, he says about Jesus of Nazareth. They replied, he was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and, and the rulers, indeed, they handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. Verse 21 says, but we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it's the third day since all this stuff took place. It's clear, as you and I read and listen to what the statement made by Cleopas and his companion that they had some hope in Christ. They had expected some good things to come into their lives because they were following him. But it's also clear that in the moment recorded for us in Luke, Cleopas and his command companion had become hopeless because of what had not happened. Listen to verse 21, the NIV. We had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. The Good News Bible, we had hoped that he would be the one who was going to set Israel free. The Living Bible, we had thought that he was the glorious Messiah and that he would come to rescue Israel. The Contemporary English Bible, we had hoped that he would be the one who set Israel free. The message says, and we had our hope that he was the one. Cleopas and his companion, the followers of Christ, they speak to Christ in a hopeless, frustrated manner because what he and others thought and what they hoped for Connecticut. Dr. Booth was preaching 
at the Messiah Baptist Church, then pastored uh, by Pastor Tyrone Jones, and, and after worship, me and Pastor Jones and, and, and Anthony Bennett and Dr. Booth went to dinner, and, and they were talking to Dr. Booth, and they said, no, Dr. Booth, we know that you're Charles Booth, that you, that you know that God has, has given you so much, so much for you. He said, I'm Charles Booth, but I have some disappointments in life. Because everybody who is alive has had some disappointments and some struggles. And the truth is, every child of God has sometimes had to ask God, why didn't you do what I thought you were going to do for me? P please don't try to be super S-U-P-R-A spiritual or deceptively deep or horribly hypocritical. No, be honest with yourself. All of us have done and perhaps are doing right now in our lives what the opus and his companion and the text did all of us at some point and under certain circumstances have even asked God, why didn't you let this happen to me? Like the open, his companion, we, we, we hope for something. We hope for a blessing. We, we got a burden. We hope for a cure. Got a curse. We hope for deliverance. We got dysfunction. We hope that God would do, but then he did not do it. And sometimes because he did not do what we hoped for, we got mad. This pandemic has made many of us, even those who claim to believe, become hopeless. Remember, the definition of hope by which we're operating is hope is the expectation of something good. How can you and I expect something good when my loved ones are dying? When friends are sick and I cannot see them or hold their hand or rub their forehead, how can I have hope when I've lost my job and I got bills? How can I have hope when I cannot visit my family and my friends? How can I have hope when I cannot even go to God's house, the place that gives me hope? Maybe, maybe like the open to this companion, you have trusted in the Lord. You follow Christ and you were living in obedience to his word and now you feel like it was all in vain. All that I did that God said I should do now, I feel like I had them paid off and I feel like it was not worth my time. But please let me help you. Please let me help myself. Let, 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 let's discover what happens when what we hope for doesn't happen. And it's right there in the text. Keep your Bible open. I'm almost done. First, the first thing that happens when, when, when what we hope for doesn't happen, the first thing that happens is this. You start going in the wrong direction. Remember, Cleopas and his friend, they are leaving Jerusalem. They are leaving the holy city. They are leaving the symbol of God's presence. They are, in effect, going away from God. And hear me, when you and I go opposite of God's direction, that's the wrong direction. So, somebody better hear me today. Who am I preaching to who has walked away from God because God did not do as you thought he should have done? Who am I talking to that, left, that have left God's church because something that you wanted wasn't right, didn't go right? You stop coming to church, stop singing, stop serving, stop giving God praise, all because God did not do what you and I had hoped or thought he would do for us or on our behalf. I, I know God is everywhere, but you better make sure of this, that you better make sure that you're going in the direction of where God is and meet him in the place where he says he will meet us when we can. They were going, first thing, in the wrong direction. Secondly, when, when, when what we hope for doesn't happen, uh, you, 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 you begin to, to let what you see make you forget what Jesus said. He opened to his companions, like many of the disciples and followers of Christ. They, they were paralyzed and polarized by Christ's death and burial. That's what they saw. They saw him hanging high, stretched wide. They saw crown of thorns on his head. They saw the blood gushing from his side. They saw his feet and hands that were, that were tied up. And they, they saw his life was body in the grave. That's what they saw, but they forgot what Jesus said. Jesus said, destroy my body, but in three days I'll rise again. He said he must go to Jerusalem, suffer many things, uh, be killed, and on the third day he will be raised. That's what Jesus said, but they forgot what he said because all they could do is see what they had saw. And that's a word for you and me today. I, I know we see sometimes the things, how bad they look, especially right now. We, 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 we see how bad bleak it is, how, how, how dark it is, how dreary it is. We see folks standing on lines getting shocked right in Walmart with masks. We see people with gloves. We see people who cannot hug and embrace. And what we see makes us sad. But I don't care what you 
and I see, we better remember what Christ says to us in his word. That, that's why we study, so that we can know and remember what the Lord says. He says in his word, his grace is sufficient. He says in his word, in this world will have trouble. He says in his word, nothing shall separate us from the love of God. He said in his word that all things work together for good to them that love him and are called according to his purpose. That's what he said. And I don't care how bleak it looks right now, how dark it looks right now. You and I better remember what he said. Because his word will keep us. His word will comfort us. His word will give us strength. His word will help us hold on when times get dark and our way seems dreary. Don't you forget what he said. And here's the third thing. When, when what we hope for doesn't happen, you miss when Jesus shows up. Ha, ah, that, that blows my mind. Jesus is right there with them, walking and talking with them and they're not sure, they don't know who he is. Now, now here's the truth. I'm trying to be done, but here's the truth. The truth is sometimes we're just like them. Christ shows up and we miss it. He shows up in our pain and we're asking, where are you? He shows up while we're struggling and while we're crying. We still were saying, come by here, Lord, come by here. He said, I've already been there. What you talking about, come by here? I'm there already. It's like that that thing footprint sometimes we can't see his prints because he's carrying us how you and i think that we made it this far if it had not been for his grace and by his power don't you miss him when he shows up be sure and clear that if you've gotten further in life it's only by the grace of almighty god cleopas and his comrade what happened to them can happen to us in fact what happened to them has happened and perhaps is happening to us they are hopeless and because they're hopeless they go the wrong direction they forget the words of jesus and and then they begin to miss christ when he shows up but in their hopeless state let me be clear there's still some good news see and, and you got to understand that no matter how bad it is as long as there is god there's something to shout about and something to smile about. Look at the text closely. Two things, and I'm done. First thing is, as hopeless as this situation was, the text makes it clear that Jesus came after them even though they were leaving Jerusalem. Now, if church was full, I'd tell them, y'all missed a great place to shout. That's a great place to shout because they were leaving God, but God wasn't going to let them go. That they said, God, I'm done. God said, no, you ain't done. I'm coming where you are. I'm going to, you let go of my hand, but I'm going to grab your hand, and I'm going to bring you back to me. God was not through with them. He had work for them. So because he did, he came after them. Can anybody shout today that we give God thanks and praise, that we have a Savior, and that we serve a God who will come after us? In the garden, he came after Adam. In, in the cave, he came after Elijah. And after the night, he came after Peter. And I thank God that we serve a God who keeps on coming after us. Why are you preaching? Because God came after me. Why are you playing? God came after you. Why are you singing? God came after you. Why are you a deacon or a trustee or usher? Because God came after you. No, it's not because you did everything right, nor did I. But God reached out through our mess and our muck and our mire and said, come unto me just as you are. Ah, he came after them. Second, thing, second piece of good news is this. Cleopas and his companions, listen, they were talking to Jesus, even though they were complaining. You, you missed it. They, they were talking to him. They were frustrated. They were angry. They were disappointed. But they were talking to the only one who could do something about what was going on in their lives. We spend too much time talking to folk about situations they can't help. I understand we need friends, sometimes we need a counselor, I understand that, but, but, but even in addition to them or before them, we've got somebody we can tell all of our troubles to, and we can come to him just like we are. Now listen, 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 listen. They were complaining. They were angry and they were frustrated. That's how they felt. And they brought their real authentic feelings to God. 
Now, I'm done because I'm sweating more than I should be for an empty church. But let me tell you this. I've heard people say even in this pandemic that you can't question God. That's a lie. You can't complain to God. That's another lie. You ought to tell God. Real prayer is telling God just what you want and telling God just how you feel. You got to tell him what's on your heart. Now, I know he knows, but when we tell him, it unloads us and makes us free because we know we can put all our trust in him. Bring your complaints to God. Bring your frustrations to God. Bring your hurts to God. Bring your tears to God. Bring your whys to God. Bring your why nots to God. Bring your how come to God. Why? Because God can handle it, and sooner or later, he'll respond. Now, I'm done, but it's in the text. He was, they, they brought their complaints to him. They were talking to him, telling him how they felt, and he responds. And, and the good news is that no matter what we bring to God, no matter what we bring to our Christ, he is able to hear us. And sooner or later, he'll respond. Look at verse 25 to 27. Those verses, he rebukes them, but then reminds them about what the Word says. See, see, if they would have had, remember, the Word, they would, not, they would not have been filled with so much doubt and anger. When you get the Word in you, when we get the Word in us, we understand that God is working anyhow. Despite what we see, he's still at work, and sooner or later, he'll show up. So we learn how to wait on the Lord and be of good courage. We learn to trust in him who makes all things right. We learn to put our faith and trust and hope in him and learn how to wait. He said, if you would have just remembered the Word, because the Word from Moses and the prophets told you that this was going to happen. He reminded them about what he said. He talked to them about the word, but remember, he was the living word. So he said, remember what I said then. If you remember what I said then, you wouldn't be running away now. You'd be still knowing that I was alive and I had all power in my hand, and you would go tell the world that I'm alive. And if you and I will get the word in us, the word will keep us. The word will give us hope. The word will give us strength. The word will give us power to hold on and hold on. How you make it? I'm making it because I know that the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I know that the Lord is my light and my salvation. I'm making it because I know that he will supply my needs because it's written in glory. How am I making it? I'm making it because I know in whom I believe. I'm persuaded he'll be able to keep me until that day. Please, please hear me. When we lose our hope, when we stop believing in what we hope for because what we hope for didn't happen, thank God that when we lose our hope, the Lord does not lose his grip on us. He still comes looking for us just like we are, tattered and torn and raggedy and messed up. He still comes reminding us that he is our Savior, that he is our friend, he is our King, and he loves us. Not only does he love us, he wants to bring us back to him. And if we will extend our hand to his, he'll put our hand in his hand and he will bring us back to him and, and he'll let us talk to him and say what we need to say, how we need to say it and sooner or later he will respond and if you keep reading that text after he responded to them, they said oh weren't our hearts warm when the man of God spoke to us by the way oh when Christ speaks to us when his spirit comforts us we find warmth, we find strength, we find power to stand and know that everything's going to be all right. That's why, though we're crying and though we are despondent, Zania, we can still say, I can see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. That's why, though we are overwhelmed by grief and by sadness because of the death of the Lord, we can still say that the Lord is my rock and my salvation. I will find my rest and my place in him because I know his word and his word gives me strength. Thank God his word is the light unto my path a lamp to my walkway. Thank God that he leads me and guides me and that he gives me strength to stand and hold on to him. He said, what do you do when you've done all you can do? Just stand. But don't just stand on anything. Stand on the promises of God. His promises are true. His promises are real. What he says he is, he is. And what he says he'll do, he will do. Our world might be hopeless. Mountains may seem high and valleys may seem low, but get the word in you. It may seem bleak. It may seem dark. You may cry yourself to sleep sometimes, but, but put the word in you because the word will give you strength. And when you get strength, you'll run to him. You won't run from him. You'll run to him. You'll hasten 
to his throne. You'll run to his arms. You, you'll run for his face. You'll say, Father, I stretch my hand to thee. No other help I know. If, if thou withdraw thyself from me, whither shall I go? When, 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 when you run to him, you, you remember what he said. And, and what he said will keep you. What he says will bless you. What he says will give you strength. What he says will give you hope. And when he shows up, you'll say, yes, Lord. Thank you for your grace. Yes, Lord. Thank you for your mercy. Yes, Lord. Thank you for your power. Yes, Lord. Thank you for your strength. Yes, Lord. I believe I'll run on. See what the end's going to be. Yes, Lord. I'm going all the way with you. Yes, Lord. The road may get rough, and the going may get tough, and the hills may be hard to climb, but I started with Jesus a long time ago, and I'm going through. Somebody ought to say, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going through. No matter what others may do, the world behind me, the cross before me, praise the Lord, I'm going through. Anybody made up their mind, I'm going through. I know it's rough right now. No, it's hard right now. No, it's dark right now. No, it's troublesome right now. But I made up my mind. He brought me too far. He ain't going to leave me. I'm going to hold on. I'm going to wait on. I'm going to pray on. I'm going to study on. I'm going to hold on. I'm going to shout on. I'm going to praise on. I'm going to dance on. Yeah. 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 Yes, I am. I'm going to hold on to my faith. I won't let go. I won't give up. I won't give out. I'm going to hold on to Mary's baby. I'm going to hold on to the Ezekiel's wheel in the middle of a wheel. I'm going to hold on to Job's redeemer. I'm going to hold on to Joshua's fallen walls. I'm going to hold on to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego's fire tamer. I'm going to hold on to Jesus. Anybody know Jesus? Clothes on my back, roof over my head, money in my pocket. Yeah. Anybody know Jesus? A mother for the motherless, father for the fatherless, a friend for the friendless, doctor in a sick room, lawyer in a courtroom. Anybody know Jesus? Do you know him? If you know him, say yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said yesterday um, I was going to do this. For Argentina Mallory, Mary Basketball of Dale Fair, because while we are running to him, while we are remembering his word, and while we are seeing him in the midst of our struggles, don't complain. God's going to keep us. I've had some good days. I've had some hills to climb. I've had some weary days. And some lonely nights but when I when I look around and I think things over all of my good days outweigh my bad days I I won't complain Sometimes my clouds hang low. 
I can hardly see the road. I ask the question, Lord, why, why so much pain? But he knows, he knows what's best for me. He sees what my eyes can't see. So I'll say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I, I won't complain. God has been so good to me. He's been so good to me more than this world or you could ever be God's been so good God's been so good to me 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 he wipes all of my tears away turns my midnights into day so when I get lonely, I say, thank you, Lord. When my friends get few, I say, thank you, Lord. Can't see my way, I say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I, I won't complain. God, our Father, I pray that our worship and the word has been pleasing in thy sight. Thank you for coming after us. Thank you for speaking to us. Thank you for staying with us and never leaving us. In the midst of all that's going on in our world today, all of us are dealing with the realities of what we hope for not happening. We didn't hope for this last month. We're not hoping for the weeks to come, but God, it happened. But don't let what's happening stop us from trusting in you. You are our Savior. You are our rock. You are our Redeemer. You are our strength. Thank you for your word. If there's someone who has listened or viewed and who has unsaved you in church, for him or her, we pray that this time of worship might lead them to you, the rock that is higher than I. I pray for those who are believers but belong to your church that our faith will be more deeply rooted, strengthened, and concretized that we can declare that we started out with you and that we're going to keep on loving you through no matter what the days bring ahead. Now, God, as we give, as we give in the sanctuary, as people give electronically, may we be obedient in our giving and our trust in you. And may you continue to prove to us that you cannot be God-giving no matter how hard you try. Bless the sick among us and our congregation. Bless those who are bereaved today, who mourn the loss of loved ones. Bless those who are fighting for their lives. We pray for them that you will fight on their behalf and they will have courage and strength to fight in your name. Bless their loved ones, their family, their friends who watch and wait from a distance. Pray that you give them courage and trust in you. And God, heal our world through your church. May your church, even St. Luke, strive to be the light of the world, the salt of the earth, and may it all that we do bring glory to your name. We love you, we thank you, and we thank you for coming after us, not just one time, but over and over and over and over again. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. People of God, say amen. My sisters and brothers, as we conclude our worship today, we pray that our time of worship might encourage you and have given you strength. If you are part of our congregation, we encourage you to give by the means that we normally do at this time in our worship. 
If you are not a part of our church, you'd like to give, you may do so by going onto our website or to give the file, the means available to us. If you are a person who is unchurched and unsaved and is looking for a church home, a connection with Christ, we invite you to call our office even now, 973-345-4309. Help us, help you, lead you to Christ, to a place where you can grow in Christ and love him as Savior and as Lord. In this new week, may we call the servant share as we are so to do. May we honor God with all that we are and that we do. Now may the loving care of God the Father, the redeeming power of God the Son, the, the renewing power of God the Holy Spirit transform us and keep us now and forever. The people of God together say amen. Enjoy your day in the Lord. Shalom.